What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today we're going to talk about a couple different ways to draw tensile structures in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so there's a couple different extensions that I found that work pretty well for this kind of thing. Um, so the first is going to be Soap Skin and Bubble. Um, you can search for that in the SketchUp extension warehouse or I'll link to it in the notes below. Um, and then you're also going to want to uh, have Curviloft by Fredo6 installed on your computer as well. So um, those two are going to give you a couple different options when it comes to creating skins and stuff like that. So I'll link to both those in the notes below, but you're going to want to have both of those on your computer to come in here and do what we're talking about right now. So first thing I want to do is I want to start off, and what I've found is it's generally easiest when you're drawing something like this to come in and draw the area that you're trying to draw this structure over. So in this case I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to draw a 10 foot by 10 foot rectangle using the rectangle tool um, just to kind of start off as an example. So let's say this is the space that I want to cover with this structure right now. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and the first structure we're going to draw is just kind of a simple four sided structure. And I've found that the best way to do this is to think about your structure as if you're actually like building it. So like for example what I would do in this case is I would have some kind of support or something like that um, on each corner of this object. So what would happen is we would draw or we would basically have a support up in the air on these two corners and then uh, you'd have your, uh, your uh, tensile structure kind of fastened to the ground on these other two corners and so then what we would do is we'd come in here and we would draw an arc just like this between these two corners and so once we draw that arc we can come in here with the rotate tool and we can create a copy of that just like this and then we can go ahead and erase out these ground points so now we've got our first two pieces of our tensile structure. So then what we would do is we'd select these two objects, we'd go ahead and make a copy of them uh, using the move tool in copy mode. So just select these two objects, tap the M key, set your base point and hit the control key. Um, so when you're moving this, if you hit control, you can see how that's going to create a copy of your selected geometry. So now you've got a copy of this geometry over here just like this. And then all you're going to do is you're going to use the scale tool to flip it or you can right click and use flip along um, in order to do that. And you may have to flip it both directions just like this. But then all you're going to do is you're just going to move these objects back just like that and then you can erase out your corner pieces. What that gives you is that gives you four pieces that kind of border um, what would be a shape or a face in here. And so with these two extensions that we have what they do is they generate a face along a framework just like this. So I'm going to make two copies of this so you can see how each one of them works. So Curviloft is the first one I'm going to talk about. And Curviloft has this option over here for skinning of shapes. And so what this will do is you can select this object and then you can select skinning of shapes. And what that will do is that will draw a face in here, um, kind of a skin along this object. And there's a few different options that you can adjust over here. I don't know that any of them are going to adjust or change this particular piece of geometry. But what that will do is that will come in here and that will create a face that's kind of stretched along um, these pieces just like this. So that's how the skinning on Curviloft is going to work. And then for this one, we're going to use Soap Skin to do the same thing. So Soap Skin is over here and uh, what you do is you select your objects and they have to all intersect so there can't be any gaps in here. But you kind of select these objects and then you come in here and you select this option for Skin. And what that's going to do is that's going to give you this little box in here that's kind of showing you the divisions. And it's going to ask you how many uh, divisions you want in here. And basically that's asking how much geometry you want it to create. So you see down here in the corner it says 10. Well if I come in here and I type 20 and I hit the enter key, you can see this divides this face up into more pieces. So I can type 15 or whatever. I'm actually going to leave it at 10 just like this. And then once you kind of got that divided up the way you want it, you just hit the enter key. And that will come in here and that will just create a skin along this face just like this. So you can see how Curviloft gives you less of a curve along this object than Soap Skin does, just like this. So, and the nice thing about Soap Skin is you can come in here and you can select this XY option right here. That'll let you adjust the ratio of what's in there. So if I come in here and I type in 
20 or 30, you can see how that's kind of adjusting the way that this does this. So I do negative 10 or negative 20. And then it'll get really crazy sometimes if you come in here with some higher numbers. So in this case, I'm just going to put it back to 1. But on some of these other objects, um, you can really kind of adjust the way that this surface comes in here. But you can see how now you've got kind of this tinsel stretched fabric shape just like this. And then you could come in here and then you could select everything and come down to the soften edges option. And you could select soften coplanar and you could just kind of soften everything down here. So then you get kind of this smooth face in here instead of the face that has all the different quads in it just like this. So you can come in here and you can adjust that that way. Once you kind of start thinking about this as drawing kind of the drawing the piece of ground that you want to cover in here, you can really kind of come in here and get creative with what you can do. So in this case, if I wanted to come in here and I wanted to create more of a long, almost cylindrical, type structure just like this, what I could do is I could come in here and I could draw some kind of arcing pieces just like this. I could make a copy of that across this face here. And then I'd have kind of the same thing. I have a four piece framework that I can come in here and I can use either soap skin or curve off skinning options to come in here and create a skin on those as well. So same thing, this time I'm gonna go ahead and divide that by a few more I'm going to divide that by 20, I'm going to hit the enter key, and then it's going to come in here and generate this same kind of tensile structure face. So you can see how in this case that one's a little bit different because the default for this really kind of stretches this down a little bit, but this is one where you could really come in here and adjust that that ratio to, to change the way that it looks. So you see how I changed that ratio to 20? So what that does is that kind of inflates this face a little more. If I bring it back down to 10 or 5, you can see how it's going to adjust the way that this arcs in here. So and then one of the options that you could have for a shape like this is if you wanted to come in here um, and imagine you were drawing um, more, more of a shape or imagine that you were coming in here and you were drawing more of a structure that had some different height supports in here just like this. So if you're gonna build this with some kind of curving supports across here, what you could do is you could draw arcs across this face. You could select just these options right here. Don't select the ones on the bottom. And what Curveloft has is Curveloft has a, uh, um, basically a function that'll come in here and it'll draw a skin across these. Um, and it kind of like, it matches basically along these arcs just like this and then there's a couple different things you can do in here to kind of adjust the way that 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 draws these between these points but you could come in here for something like that and imagine you were building something that was more of an abnormal shape like this instead of a uniform one you could use curve off to come in here and create that so that would let you create more of an abnormal type shape in here so that gives you a lot of options for things that aren't necessarily as uniform as this piece so, and then sometimes what happens is you want to come in here and you want to draw something um, that's more along like a circle. So it would be more of a circular structure. Well, what you would do is you'd come in here and you'd figure out, um, in this case, I'm going to draw an eight sided circle. So I'm going to activate the circle tool by tapping the C key. And then uh, I'm going to draw an eight sided circle with a 10 foot radius. Well, then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw another circle up above like this with a very small radius, so maybe like a one foot radius or something like that. But then what we would do in this case is you could come in here and you could draw kind of a, you could come in here and you could draw like a canvas just like this. So just kind of a rectangle between these two points and then you could draw an arc and then erase your canvas back out. And then what you could do is you could rotate this using the rotate tool in copy mode in order to draw a pair of arcs along here. You could draw another arc up and down. And probably one on the inside right here. But if you're gonna do this along a circle, what you can do is you can generate one of these using soap skin. 
So, and what it'll do is that'll generate your, um, basically your skin along this face. Well, then what you can do is you can come in here and you can select this and you can copy it in a circle. So you have kind of a uniform shape all the way around. So, and I'm gonna save my model before I do that. So what I'm gonna do is basically I'm gonna generate one of these and I'm gonna make this a component. So we'll call this, um, we'll just call it piece. You can call it whatever you want. But you're gonna come in here, you're gonna rotate this in copy mode, you're gonna type in times seven. And what that does is that, that creates seven additional copies around this circle so that you've got this whole face in here. And you can see how that doesn't necessarily line up super good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna select this geometry and we're gonna soften it. So just uh, come down to the soften edges section of your tray, drag this so that those are all hidden geometry. And then you can see what you've got is you've got this uniform piece. And then you can come in here and you can delete out this top part. So that you've got kind of this uh, basically octagonal arcing shape up here. So that's how you'd come in here and you'd create something like that. And then the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is more of an abnormal shape. So what we do is we'd uh, basically draw the area that we wanna cover. And then basically what I would do is I would kind of think about where my supports would be. So in this case, I would draw a support here. I'd figure there'd probably be a ground point right here. So basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking for something that kind of curves over to this side. So what you could do is you could come in here, you could draw kind of a rectangle here, a rectangular face is your guide. And I'm just using this so my arcs kind of uh, so that I have a face to draw my arcs along, but then I kind of erase all that stuff back out. So once you do that, what you can do, once you've got kind of your arcs drawn, is you just select them, you make a copy and you flip them using the scale tool. And then you do that one more time over here. So you make a copy of those and you flip them with the scale tool and then move them back together. And what that does is that gives us another face or uh, another series of faces so that we can use soap skin to come in here and generate our face. And you can see how that's gonna generate this skin and it may take a little while. You can see how it comes in here and it generates that like it kind of stretched these, like it kind of stretched these between your different supports. So once you kind of wrap your mind around the way that works, you can come in here and you can get really creative with the kind of stuff that you can create. So anyway, that's where I'm gonna wrap up today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, did you like this workflow? Uh, did I leave anything out that you would like to see? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. That's got everything from extensions you can purchase to support the show to uh, links to my Patreon page. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.